Hey guys, my name is Kurt Wan, author of the Startup Survival System, and welcome to Startup Survival TV. Hey guys, this is Kurt Wan, author of the Startup Survival System, and welcome to Startup Survival TV. And you know, one of the biggest issues and concerns that startup businesses have or small businesses have is well, how do they employ the right people? And a lot of startups and small businesses owners stay small because they don't want to actually employ anybody because they're afraid of the, the issues that may come up with them. And so today we're very privileged to have Colin Macon here, who is a specialist employment lawyer, to actually help answer some of those pressing questions that you have and to be able to address some of the biggest concerns that small business owners have as well as startups and to be able to help you to move your business forward and make the right decisions when it comes down to employing the right people. All right. So, okay, cool. So, Colin, welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank, you. thank you for um, your time in, in well, doing this interview. Thank you having me. Yeah, great. Thank you. very welcome. So, thank you. Um, Colin, why don't we just kick this off. Why don't you sure. just tell me a little bit more about yourself? Okay. Um, I've been a special employment lawyer for 16 years now. And, uh, in fact, started my uh, my career up in Cambridge, so a hotbed for startups, and I spent a lot of time advising startups, particularly on employment issues. That's awesome. Uh, some great examples of guys coming in to see me, uh, wanting contracts, uh, wanting help with uh, with employing people, and now some of these are big companies, which is great. Is that really always good to see. Yeah. That, um, so, Colin, I mean, let let's jump straight into it. You know, um, in your whole sixteen years of experience sure. in this. Sure sector helping startups or large corporations also what, what would you say are the three or four biggest concerns that business owners have when they first start employing sure I, it's a thing you mentioned first off is employing <laughs> the right people now I'm not sure there's, a, there's any tick box exercise but that is key mm. I think uh, it, 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 this sounds obvious but it's very it's very um, it's easy to train someone into a role. It's not easy to get someone to train into or, or, or become part of your culture. Okay, that is very key, especially for a startup. Tell us, tell us more about that. Well, um, I think sometimes I think sometimes startups um, can make the error where they where someone comes along and promises them a lot of things, and a key one is uh, clients following or people that will invest. I know the right people employ me. Uh, two problems with that, they might not be right for the culture. Um, I suppose three points for that. Um, secondly, um, they might demand things because they say, well, I can bring this, I want this. It might change the dynamic mm -hmm. of, uh, of, your, of, your, of your business early on. They might be demanding uh, some equity share or a large contract, it can, a large salary, so it can cause problems. Uh, and thirdly, what if it doesn't work out early on? What if they don't bring all these people along? you're in real trouble. So I think sometimes that's a mistake startups can make. Someone that's promising them something they think will take their business quickly from A to B. And, and, and so you need to be wary of that. I think you need, you need good staff, you need great skilled people, but, but there's a lot of great people out there, but I think you've got to, you've got to get the right mix. Right. All these people you can work with. Small, small company, you're working with them on a daily basis. I think that's really, really key. Uh, I think secondly, and I appreciate there's a cost to this when start with startups, but and this is not a pitch for lawyers, but I think get your employment contracts in place. Crucial. Now I mentioned that I mentioned those guys in Cambridge that came to see me. They they had developed intellectual property and very significant stuff. And a fantastic idea they had, which is as I say, they're now a big company, but they wanted to protect that. So they came to me and said, look, we're going to start employing people. We're the founders, we want to start employing people. We really want to protect that. So you're looking at things like IP, protecting the intellectual property, your confidentiality, and that includes you know, your clients, your customers, and your business. How do you run things? What do you do? What is confidential to your business? And also, you know, as lawyers, we think we have to think what happens if it all goes wrong, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> and, often, and often, you can get, and it gets back to my point about employing the right people. You can often get uh, someone who think, comes on board, likes what you're doing, thinks I can do this better, or I can make more money for myself. I don't need to take a salary. 
and they think, well, what I need is the clients. I need the customer base. Or, I, or they take the idea, which is which intellectual property board. But if they say, right, I'm going to take these clients and start up myself, and you've got no protection in your contract of employment, you're, you're in trouble. They can do that. Surely, as long as, as long as they don't take a customer list and things like that, they can do that. And that, that's fatal. So really, really important to get that thing right. I think the third thing is, as your business grows, you've got to manage it properly. Um, you know, it's another obvious one, have a great place to work, because people, you know, if someone, people are less likely to think about leaving and taking customers if they're happy. Yeah. And, and the last thing you want to do is, is think, well, try and, try and get customers back once they take it. It's best to keep people happy. And if they're projecting a, a if they really enjoy working for, for, for you, that comes across in their dealings with people, and that's crucial. But I think it goes a lot further. I think it goes to managing employees because I think if you don't deal with issues quickly, mm -hmm. that creates a problem. Yeah, it's a big problem when you let it surface and bubble up. Absolutely. Under. Absolutely. And a prime example of this is, is where you, you employ someone, and I understand this, you're reluctant to dismiss them. You know, yeah. Everyone's, everyone's doesn't want that confrontation. So you're a, nice, yeah, you're a nice person, you don't really want to confront, so you just let it, you let them do their thing. And it gets to a point where you say, right, this is too much. I've just, I've just got to deal with this. So then perhaps you go and speak to a lawyer and they say, well, you know, how long have they been there? And they say, well, they've been two and a half years. Well, what the law says is that in the first two years of your employment, you can dismiss someone. You don't even have to have a reason. As long as you're not discriminating, that's a different point of view. You can dismiss someone as long as you pay them the notice under the contract, and then they can't bring a claim for unfair dismissal. They're two years. So I always say, look, if something like that is happening in the first couple of years, you're getting a bad feeling, deal with it. And deal with it quickly. But that's specifically in the UK though, right? Specifically in the yeah. UK. Sorry, absolutely. So, uh, yes. So, if, if you... Things generally... If you've got a bad feeling about it, generally it doesn't get better. <laughs> so what you don't want to do is get over the two years and suddenly think, right, this really needs to be alone. Then you've got to go through a whole lot of procedures. Right. And, and so I think those are... And, and I suppose if there's a fourth thing, if you do have to deal with things uh, you're unable to dismiss without going through procedures, that's the key. You know, make sure that you, you have to um, follow certain procedures under law. If you're dismissing mm -hmm. someone or making them redundant, make sure you do that. Make sure it's sound. Take right. advice on that. So that's really, from a, a lawyer's point of view and a practical point of view, I think that's what I would say. That you okay. would. Awesome. Yeah. So let, let's talk about how a startup or small business owner would sort of overcome those or help put things in place so that they don't run into those problems. So let's take um, culture, for example. Yes. Uh, that comes yes. right from the beginning. What kind of um, process or what question should they ask at the beginning or what question should they avoid asking <laughs> at the beginning um, <laughs> yeah. when finding out whether a person is right or not? Because I think there's a lot of yeah. Um, been a lot of lawsuits over the past few years when people are saying, well, look, you, it's been discriminatory, you didn't hire me for specific reasons. I think Correct. most recently, uh, online retailer ASOS you know, showed a picture on Twitter of all the interns, but they were all of one ethnicity and made a big storm. Okay. Um, but, so for the sort of average year out there, once yeah. yeah. you start hiring, what, what should they ask or not ask, and how should okay. they conduct themselves in that uh, industry? I think I'll start with what not to ask. Okay. Okay. And this is again pretty obvious. Mm -hmm. Don't ask anything that could be inherently discriminatory. Okay. Uh, example, a, a female employee, come, young female employee comes in, you may just be making conversation. You say, oh, I've just got married. Oh, you say, it's fantastic. You say, oh, are you guys thinking of starting a family? Might be said in all innocence, mm -hmm. but avoid it. Okay. Because that can be construed as... You know, if they don't get the job, they might say, well, it was because I said I was thinking of starting a family and I might go off on maternity leave, etc., etc. So you, you, need to be, you need to be wary of that. I think be, be wary of letting your guard down in the sense that um, don't let it become too conversational. Because you can start talking about your views on something or, mm. and that can, that can cause a problem. Okay. Uh, again, speaking as a lawyer, I think I would have a set series of questions. So, and, 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 and ask everyone the same set of questions. Okay. And those can be designed to see if they'll fit into your culture. Um, I, I think also, I, I think also uh, again, this is not a, a legal point, but I think, uh, I think it's good to get them to meet the team. If you've got a team, uh, you're either 
they meet everyone. It's a small business. They meet everyone. Everyone interviews them, or they, or you go out for a drink yeah, with them. Uh, you have to be careful again of what your colleagues might say <laughs> after a few drinks. Uh, but you, but, but I think that just see you can see then whether they're going to, um, whether they're going to fit into the culture. Okay. Um, a, a relaxed interview, but I think I think quite a formal interview in the sense of quite structured. Okay. Uh, and, and as I say, avoiding anything that might potentially be considered discriminatory. Okay, awesome. And so let's let's go to the the second point. Once you've actually hired them, sure. Um, <coughs> let's let's say, for example, something does go wrong. Okay. You know, um, they initially fit it into your culture, but after about three four months, um, things don't tend to work out. They're not necessarily performing. Yeah. What what uh, what are some of the things they need to have in place to be able to deal with that? Is there a process that they need to go through in order to dismiss someone? Sure. I, I think in your example, if you're talking about the first three months, mm. then, then you don't have to go through a process. Ah, okay. um, and, and this is also where the contract drafting can be quite important. If you, have a, if you have a process in your contract that's contractual, you'll have to go through it. <laughs> right. yeah. So yeah, that can all be sorted. But, but I think... Uh, in, in, the, in your example, the first three months, things aren't working out, you've made your decision, just cut to the chase. Have a meeting, so I'm really sorry, you know, uh, this is just not working out for us. You know, pay what you need to pay under the contract and, and call, it, call, it, call it quits. I think if you're getting on to after the two years where they have employment law rights mm -hmm. uh, and you have an individual that's not performing, you have to take them through a performance management program. Okay. Uh, and, and it's not... It mustn't be seen as, as, a, as a disciplinary mm -hmm. uh, thing because there could be various reasons why they're not performing. It might be they're finding the job difficult, uh, their skills don't quite match up. Mm -hmm. It might be simply that they're slacking. Uh, that, that's a different point, but it, it might be there's problems at home. It might be problems in their personal life. So you need to approach it from a, it's a management process. It's more a it's more a support process. Okay. You would go through a series. You'd have you'd have formal meetings with them. You would explain to them uh, by by, by in writing generally a letter what the problem is, what they're not doing. You'd give them some time and you'd invite them into a meeting to discuss it. Okay. And that consultation is really, let, let's find out what the problem is, let's see how we can help you, and let's see what we require you to do going forward within that context. Once you've agreed all that, it should be formally put in writing and there should be a reasonable time scale. So, okay, Colin, you're not performing, you're not reaching your targets, um, we can't see any difficulties, there's no external problems. Um, we're going to give you six months to, to reach certain targets, mm -hmm. otherwise we'll consider some further action. You have to be realistic, I mean, is six months realistic? Is it a, is it a, is it a six month cycle, is it an eight month cycle, is it a 12 month cycle? It's all got to be reasonable and fair. If I, if I get to that six month point, for example, I'm still not reaching my targets, then you can have a second meeting. And you would issue them with a uh, with a warning. Um, you could issue them with a warning from the outset, but I would probably say yeah, a written warning at that point, saying, "Okay, you know, if 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 you don't get it right in the next six months, then we're going to file a written warning." And you go through the process again, and if at the end of it they haven't reached target, you're entitled to dismiss, and that can be a fair dismissal. Okay. So it, it gets on my my earlier point: procedure, get it right. Yeah. Because your, your, your reason is not a problem. People aren't performing, you're entitled to go through the process. But get it right. So is it, uh, is it quite, would it be a good practice for a business owner to have even more regular performance reviews with... Um, yeah, with yeah, I like that. I think, uh, I think, I think that is something that, that a, a tribunal will look for. You know, are you having reviews? Does this person, is this person aware that there might be issues? Um, you know, does this come out of the blue? Because that can point to another reason. Right. Um, the other thing to the other thing to bear in mind: if you are having appraisals, be honest. Because it, a lot of people will say an employee who they don't think is performing as well as they would like, they say they tick the satisfactory box. Right. Now a judge will look at it and say satisfactory is satisfactory. Why are you now wanting to dismiss this person or, or take this person through a process when you said they were satisfactory? So I think you have to be honest because evidentially it can come back and haunt you. There, I mean, there's quite a big trend right now where you know some small business owners they they don't really want to deal with all the sort of 
additional expenses yep. of yep. employing yep. people, the national insurance, sure. all the taxes, things yep. like that. So th what they're actually doing is maybe contracting out and getting contractors to work for them uh, yep. in a different way. Yep. What's, uh, what are some of the things they should look out for when actually doing that? You know, if they have someone coming in to do marketing, but they're, um, you know, an individual that is actually contracting to your company instead of being an employee, yeah. uh, what are the things they have to look out for in, when doing that? Okay. Well, I think from an, uh, from an employment law, I mean, that can work. Obviously, mm -hmm. that's a model that works yeah. and people use it. And I can understand why people use it. I think the danger comes when, 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 when the person working for you they cross over from being a contractor to an employee. Okay. And that's a matter of, matter of evidence. You know, has, the, has the relationship changed over time such that they're now an employee? Um, and usually what happens, if you, if you end up with someone who's, who's contracting with you and has been there a long time, you might say, okay, we no longer require this marketing function. Okay, or well, our business is going in a different way. So we say, okay, we're gonna give you notice under your, under your your contract that we've got with you, one month's notice, end of the contract, and they say, hang on, I've been here three years. I must be an employee. Mm. Um, I'm not a tax lawyer, but I think also there's a, there's a tax element there. You can get yeah. yourself into trouble with a tax man mm. if, you, if you end up having people that are, in fact, employees uh, on your books that, 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 that say they are self-employed or, or, or contractors. Okay. I think the best way to do it is have, a, have, a, have an arm's length agreement. Don't, if you're going to contract contract with a company, contract with, a, with an entity rather than an individual. Uh, and that, that entity then employs the individual. Okay. That, that's better. Uh, and, even if you can, and certainly if you can have an entity that has a lot of consultants on their books and you're just using one of those, mm. that really draws the relationship away. Right. But that's, that's the danger. Okay. Um, I think from a practical point of view though, um, you know, if you're using a lot of contractors, are they really buying into your business? Are they really buying into what you want to achieve? Mm. Uh, and some employees, employees are better at doing that, I think. Yeah, if you employ the right people. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, at, at the startup stage, when you, you want to get employment um, contracts drawn up, things like that, you want to hire a, a lawyer. A lot of yeah. a lot of startups and small business owners are going to say, well, look, it's, it's too <laughs> expensive. And the whole money thing scares them away. Yeah, no, I understand it. So, I understand it. But I think. I mean, I've, I've made, I've made uh, mistakes where I have not paid for that experience and it actually cost me more than actually sure. paying whatever amount. Sure. But I think um, choosing the right lawyer to deal yeah. with it is yeah. A, yeah. a really important thing. Yeah. What, what are some of the questions a, a startup or small business owner should ask themselves and also ask a lawyer to find out whether they are the right match and can do the right thing for them? Sure. Uh, I think uh, well, there's lots of great lawyers out there. There's no doubt about that. I think it's it's like anything. You need to find someone you can work with, and, and that sounds pretty obvious. And, and, and but it, it, it's true. You know, some lawyers are very commercial. Some 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 are, are a little bit different to that. Uh, but I, I think you you need to really find someone you can work with on on on. on. So that's the first thing. Secondly, I think I think for for startups, I, I, you'd be looking for I think a, a, some sort of package. I don't think there's any reason why you can't say to a lawyer, "Look, I, I've got a startup. Okay, I appreciate that." And this goes beyond just employment contracts. This goes, I, I'm sure you, you're talking about all the business contracts too, yeah. and, and things like that. Look, I, I, I've got a startup. I'm um, I, I want I, I appreciate the importance of, of legals. I'm concerned about the costs, obviously. Can we agree a package? Uh, and and I think I think that that that, that is something that, that lawyers will offer you, um, but you need to find the right ones, and the package needs to be yeah cost effective for you and for them. Um, and then I think from that I think that the benefit for for uh, so the, the payoff for the lawyer in the long term might be if it's a long term relationship and the business develops. So so they are in effect saying okay well I'll, I'll give you this package at a certain price early on, and then they want to develop the relationship that your business then flourishes. It's hopefully a long-term relationship and they work, and that's how these things work. Okay. So I think there's no problem saying to them, look, this is what I want. Can you offer me a package, a suite of documents? Okay. And I think I think you raised something, um, a very valid point is, not all lawyers can deal with any any contract, right? You, you should that's really right. go for a specialist lawyer, because you've got lawyers that deal with 
intellectual property, commercial agreements, employment contracts. Yeah. So, I mean, it's always best to go for a, a specialist lawyer. Right? Absolutely right. Absolutely. I, th I think you've got to say, okay, well, what, is my, what is my key here? Is my intellectual property key? Uh, if that's key, then I think you need to go and speak to someone who can protect that. And they will also they will also look at making sure that provisions in a contract of employment are correct. Um, you know, there's standard IP clauses in contracts of employment, but I think if, if your if your business is dependent on its IP, for example, then you need to get a specialist advice. Mm. In terms of your commercial contracts, specialist commercial lawyers, absolutely, and and, and employment lawyers the same thing. You know, get get it right early on, as you say, as the, otherwise. You know, it comes back to haunt you, and you spend a lot of money. It's it's money well spent at the beginning. I appreciate you know you, you've, got, you've got to be uh, you've got to be comfortable with it, but I, I think it, it, it is because ultimately that's what will happen. And, it, and in an employment context, um, if anything does happen, the judge will say, "Where's the documents?" You know, if we're having a dispute about a contract, yeah, he promised me this. Well, no, I didn't. Is there a contract? It's always going to be the starting point. Awesome. The key. Mm -hmm. So I think I think don't be don't be don't be put off by the employment laws at all. Don't let them frighten your business. Just just manage it. You know, you're always you can be the best employer in the world with the best culture. You're always going to get an issue. That's just life. Mm. So, but don't be scared. There's all these stories out there, and everyone thinks you know employment laws. They just they they, they, they make it very difficult to run a business. Not. I think if you manage it well and you, you deal with it properly, they don't. In fact, they can help. So I mean, that would be my tip. Awesome. Excellent. So, uh, Colin, thank you very much very for welcome. your time. Thank you. Um, you know, if let, let's say, what is your process? So, say for example, if if a startup wanted to, or a small business owner wanted to work with you or get advice from you, how? What is the best way? What is your process to helping them? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I I would say first, you know, contact me first. Um, we've got some commercial guys we can chat to. Um, and we can we can chat it through. We can come up with this package, and and, and hopefully at a cost that, that people can can yeah are comfortable with. Uh, and, and yeah, a suite of documents, you know, contracts, contracts of employment, that sort of thing. So yeah, I would say you know, contact me. We'd have a we'd have a chat about it. See what really you want to achieve on this. You know, what's what's you know, what's what's you understand your business. Let's understand your business. Let's understand your products, and, and then we can advise you in terms of in terms of that. Okay. okay, great stuff. Right. Good stuff. Well, for all of you out there, if you're having problems with uh, your staff or you're thinking about hiring uh, employees and you're not quite sure what, what to do, well, now you've got a guy here that can really help you. So I really encourage you to get in contact with Colin if you do have any questions. Um, and if you post any questions that you have, just in the comments box below. And we can always forward that on to Colin and maybe yeah. schedule another time to have, a, have another video. video. Yeah, great. So, uh, so with that, go out there and decide to thrive.